Welcome to the 15th annual Bridges to the World Film Festival. Tonight's film is the second in our series and happy St. Valentine's Day. World Artist Experience's vision is to bridge people and cultures across the world to develop mutual understanding. If you would like to receive further information, email us at wae at comcast.net. Following the screening of the film, you may ask questions by putting them in the Q&A box on the, on the panel. Please, the, our panelists will be so gracious as to answer those. We're grateful to Dr. Greg Fowler, who organized for the short of the dance film tonight and for moderating our evening. Dr. Fowler is professor of electronic media and film at Towson University since 1986 and is associate dean of the College of Fine Arts and Communications. He received his master's of fine, art, uh, fine <clears throat> film production from Syracuse University and his doctorate in film studies from Northwestern University. He was an associate editor of the International Dictionary of Film and Filmmakers. He has been published in various academic journals, has presented papers at numerous film and, and media conferences, and has written about the history of screen dances. Dr. Fowler also worked professionally as a film editor. He collaborated with choreographer Susan Mann and composer Bill Kleinsasser to create the screen dance, Do You Like That? He is currently finishing a documentary on an important 20th century art dealer and French resistance fighter. I might add that Dr. Fowler is a wonderful and a member of the World Artist Experience Bridges to the World Film Festival. He adds so much to the team and enlightening us. We thank you for those wonderful contributions that you had. And you might, and you will enjoy, I'm sure, the essays that he's written in the Bridges to the World Film Festival guide. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Fowler. Greg, we appreciate all you do. Thank you, Betty. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the Towson University's College of Fine Arts and Communication for uh, making this screening tonight possible. And I'd like to also take this opportunity to introduce two of our guests for this evening. Uh, our first one is Ali Ketter Brodsky. She's the co-founder of Motion States Arts with uh, Leela Hurwitz and Andy Russ. Motion State Arts presents innovative dance films and live performances from local, national, and international artists. Ali is on the board of New England Presenters, which provides leadership and support for the presentation and development of the New England Performing Arts. She works as a dance advisor and curator of the, of the Zyterian Theater in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and has designed award-winning choreography for the Wilbury Theater Group in Providence. She was recognized with a 2022 Massachusetts Cultural Council Fellowship in Choreography, and she was honored to be part of NEFA's New England Regional Dance Development Initiative in 2021-2022. Along with her is Andy Russ, co-producer of the dance film series and dance festival. He is an international, and inter, excuse me, he is an interdisciplinary artist, designer, and educator working under the moniker Passive Aggressive Novelty Company. Part of his recent works have included being music supervisor for the Merce Cunningham Dance Company and artistic coordinator for cellist Yo-Yo Ma's Silk Road Project. So Ali and Andy, if you wanna come on screen and say hello and offer a few words before we begin. Hi, hello, thank hello, you for hello. having us. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, I'll let you take it away. You want to start? Oh, I just wanted to say uh, to thank you very much for the invitation to uh, curate these films. We're always excited to spread the screen dance love to as wide an audience as possible. So having this opportunity, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't know, uh, people know Motion State Arts is based in Providence, Rhode Island. So this is um, really a nice um, opportunity for us to spread our, as Andy said, spread our, our screen dance love. 
Right. Motion state arts. It, now we don't own, we don't only um, curate a dance film series, but we also curate a dance festival. So if anyone is in the Providence area in March, please come find us, and uh, we see some screen dance there and um, live, as well as live dances. Great, thank you very much. And finally, I'd like to introduce our third guest for the evening, uh, Susan Mann. Susan Mann performed with professional companies, including the Harford Chamber Ballet, Das Bonner Ballet in Germany, and the Scharier Dance Company before receiving her MFA in choreography from the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. She has performed in numerous ballets, including the lead in Paquita and Swan Lake. She has also performed solos by modern choreographers such as Jakob Scharier, Jan van Dyck, and Peter Pucci. Susan is the recipient of Maryland State of the Maryland State's Art Council Awards for both solo dance performance and choreography. She has created more than 40 works, including award-winning screen dances. She's a dance faculty member at Towson University, and I'm also pleased to uh, share with you all that she and I co-teach a Dance for the Camera course here at Towson University. So Susan, come on and say hi. Hi, so nice to join you, and so nice to see you, Andy and Allie, again. Um, this is great. Yeah. And um, happy Valentine's Day, particularly if you're in the Dance for the Camera class and you're watching today. Really appreciate you being here. And um, if you have any questions about, I think the film that I choreographed uh, is the shortest one on the program, probably. <laughs> if you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, I co-created it with my husband, John, and we shot it on 16 millimeter film. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to seeing the other works. All right, thank you everyone, appreciate that. Uh, we'll all reconvene here after the screening for a question and answer session. So I'm gonna now turn it over to Patrick for directions on how to get to the screening for this evening. Ali and Andy, thank you so much for this wonderful collection of films tonight. Uh, they're quite impressive. And as, as you kind of alluded to in your opening remarks, it's quite a, a range of work. Um, so maybe we can start with the question uh, that I think people are asking um, is how do you define or explain a dance film? Uh, you know, again, the range of works is quite extensive here in terms of how one might define or explain that. So how do you, how do you define this kind of work? I mean, I definitely, I think it's, it's, a, it's a definition that it, it's constantly evolving. Um, and as curators, um, I think we're often looking to the artists too, to help define what that means. Um, I think, I know what, as curators, what we're, we're looking at is this sort of hybrid um, art form, I guess, that's sort of merging um, cinematography and choreography, um, the languages and the processes and things like that um, into this sort of combined language. So we're not, we're, for us, we're not looking for films that have dancing in them nor are we looking at dances that exist that someone happens to have captured on, on film or video in a lot of these cases, but it's, it's where the, the creative languages are, are all from there from the start all the way to the end. Um, yeah, I think that's a place where we start from anyway. And as you can tell from this uh, collection and usually most of our programs, it, it's, um, it's pretty diverse. There's no one definition or one um, style uh, that, that we're particularly intrigued by, but it's that variety and combination and diversity. Um, I think I was using the uh, analogy to, you know, the moth radio hour is a collection of people telling different stories. And I think that when we're curating, we're looking at a collection of stories, but it's not only just the stories that the artists are telling, but it's how they tell the stories that is interesting to us. Mm -hmm. Allie, did you want to add anything to that or? I mean, I, I think Andy said it really well. Um, I would just add, it's really the, con the, the conversation between the camera and the, the dance and the environment and, and how those things speak to each other. But yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. The camera, the dance and the environment because the, the works we saw tonight we're, we're, we saw pieces that are in clearly manufactured sets, uh, places that use actual locations, whether they're rural or urban, uh, particularly the last piece with the, with the long industrial abandoned factory kind of 
hallway, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, it, you know, that I think that third element is really important uh, in terms of how you might define this. Yeah. Uh, another thing that sort of comes out of that is uh, we often run in with our students in our class um, how one might consider dance, quote unquote, and movement. Uh, I was thinking, you know, particularly of something like Picnic that we saw or um, So Nice to Meet You might stretch what most people think of choreography or dance and see it more as maybe sort of stylized movement. So I don't know if you can maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think as Andy alluded to, we're really trying to push the boundaries of, of how people consider and see dance film. Um, I always say dance film is the gateway <laughs> to people really enjoying live dance. Um, and uh, I think those two films in particular that for Picnic, especially there's a um, the camera work in that is I see it, that is sort of even more of a movement and choreography. So yeah, I think we're just really look, we're interested in, in expanding what that, that means to have choreography for film. I think one of our I also, yeah, go ahead, Andy. Keep keep going. Yeah, I, one of our artists in another Q and A had once said that the choreography really happens in the editing, and so I think that you can push a little bit more the the movement because the camera really is that partner as well. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, and I think just one of the things I wanted to add too is again, as curators, as we're setting up this sort of tasting menu of um, you know different courses that one of the considerations and one of the interesting things we also like to do is that, you know, a particular piece may ask you to look at it in a certain way and experience it in a certain way. And then the thing that comes immediately after, it may be asking to be looked at it in a certain way, but you have the memory of the previous one. And so in a way you're looking at something um, with a uh, just a yeah, different modality or fresh set of eyes, like the, I, the animated, the stop motion, animated film like i don't those uh creators wouldn't necessarily consider what they made as a dance film um but in the context of what we're doing you know in terms of looking at the body moving we found it was an interesting conversation to be had um with that juxtaposed and we've we have had a number of animated films that we've uh, incorporated into um into screenings um so I mean, definitely they're working with the moving body um and just with having that, um, you know, paired up with other um, maybe more traditional dancing films is, is, is an interesting uh, thing for us. I, I can imagine it being a, a challenging work because when, when Susan and I try to curate our, even just our, our student projects, figure out what flows after the next one. And particularly when you have such a wide range of, again, types of work, everything from a piece uh, like End of the Block, which is, you know, very much, it strikes me as very much about social issues. Uh, and then the humor, the generic humor of Duel. I mean, you know, how, you know, putting those next to one another, I, I realize they weren't next to one another in this curation, but even where they sit, you know, it makes you, as Andy was saying, think about the other films in a very, a very different light. And, you know, sometimes it can be jarring, right? You, you move from one to the other. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's interesting what we, as we sequence things, and again, this is, uh, these films are pulled from past screenings. So a lot of these films were originally intended to be next together, next to each other. Um, but when we, we sort of work with new combinations, it's interesting for us, I think, to find what rhymes mm -hmm. in a way between films um, and where we even need in the flow of the evening, um, where we need contrasts. And so I think um, since we've seen these films in different contexts, it's interesting to see what comes up. Um, yeah, and I even notice different things in the films when I see them, uh, when we pair them differently uh, next, to, next to different films. Yeah. Well, since we're sort of talking about that, um, can you talk a little bit about how you decided on these 10 films? You know, what, you know, what were you thinking as you curated this collection for us this evening? So we had 
so this, so we've had our series for five years now, and somehow we really do have a wide range of international films. Um, so these were sort of uh, the ones that I we kind of felt like were the ones that spoke to us and that spoke to each other in a in an interesting way. Um, I don't know, Andy. Ali, can you talk a little bit about how we curate stuff? Like what's our process, how we receive sure. films so, and how we choose films? Yeah, so we have a submission process, which actually is going to open in a few weeks um, in March, uh, probably towards the end of March through Film Freeway. So we take in submissions and then typically Andy and I will watch everything. And um, and it really is a conversation between the two of us. It, and, and I think Andy alluded to the tasting menu. We really like to have a little bit of everything uh, there. Um, seeing what complements each other. And for these, for this series, um, it was a nice challenge for us to look at all the international films that we had. And we had quite a few and to see um, which ones would be nice in conversation with each other. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, question, another question that came up in the chat uh, area um, is an, maybe an interesting one. See if you can comment on this. The question is, what's the difference between the works we saw tonight and performance art? I feel like we've gotten that question before. <laughs> spelling, I think the only difference is spelling. <laughs> um, I. I, I'm not really sure how to to answer that, Andy. How do you do? You have a. I mean, I think I think um, I mean as we were alluding to the definition of screen dance or dance films is a, a little fluid. I think performance art is also a term that maybe even more fluid. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think traditionally, I mean, performance art is is all about live. Um, historically, and I, I know that there's some that the, the documentation is important to, um, whereas obviously dance film by its nature is not live. So I think there's there's some, some raw differences there. Um, if, if, if the question is in reference to what is dance versus what is performance art, if you, one defines performance art as not dance, right? I mean, I think that's what we're, we're interested in that continuum. You know what? You know what, what? What makes a moving body dance versus something else versus mind versus all of that? And I, um, I think that is one of the questions that we find is interesting. Um, and I don't know if we necessarily have an answer, but we'd like to sort of put that forward in sort of the curation of an evening um, mm -hmm. to let people sort of decide. Um, I know we've had Q and A's before where people have been like, "That doesn't look like dance to me," and, but then that it prompts an interesting discussion is why is that why do you feel that way you know yeah i mean from my experience i i think if i had to distinguish between the two it, it seems that the the question the the fact that film dances are mediated right they're they're not live whereas at least in my experience performance art seems to be just a documentation of a of a live performance which is not what um Film dances are. I mean, I know there are exceptions, but you know, that this for me seems to be again in my experience is that that kind of difference between the two, and not that I need to distinguish between them, but you know, just in terms of how you know it seems to work that way. Um, Susan, I'm going to toss one to you since you are a guest artist with us tonight, and one of your films, your film was shown as one of the ten tonight. Can you talk a little bit about Throne? Um, how, how you created it, uh, what you hoped an audience would pull from it or anything else you'd like to talk about? I created Throne with John, uh, my husband. And so we, we had different ideas about what it was really, but they were related ideas. John was thinking that he wanted to explore the, the idea of thrownness that philosophy discusses, the sense of being thrown into an alien world that you, do, you don't feel like you belong in. And I wanted to talk about my feelings as technology has proliferated and seems like events are accelerating rapidly. And I felt a little bit like uh, the world around me wasn't mine anymore. It was passing me by really quickly in, in some odd ways and ways that I didn't really wanna join necessarily. So I felt a bit alienated 
And we wanted to put those ideas together, our feelings together, and not, not necessarily do a narrative, but think about whether or not we could capture that feeling of being uncomfortable, being in a place where you don't belong. And we actually did throw that dancer out into the woods, <laughs> into the field. But um, then we tried after that to catch something of the surreal quality of it. We had a wonderful costume designer who super saturated all the colors so that they were oddly bright and not belonging out there in the green woods at all. And we had a really good time just trying to think how we could capture the feeling rather than the, the narrative. We had fun. How would you say that your, your, your movement gestures or your choreography contributed to that sense, that feeling? Um, the, the, big, the big piece for me actually was the, the, the moment when Dana finds herself in the woods and that we worked for a long time on that feeling of having to try to move air into different parts of your chest and your hands and your, your body and try to just stay in something small that's about being shocked and frightened and terrified. And I guess it, it probably doesn't seem to me like there's a lot of dance in this piece sometimes when I look back on it. It always feels that way. It always feels to me like the film kind of eats up all the dance movement. And when you when you get ready to talk about something um, meaningful that's not a dance theme, a lot of it becomes a little bit more pedestrian than I would like it to be sometimes. But this time, that moment was not really dance and not really real and not really pedestrian. It was something else. And I really quite enjoyed it. Great, hey, thank you, thank you. Uh, another question in our, our box here is, uh, I guess I guess it could be for all three of you in some ways. Um, what is, if there is, what is your relationship to Merce Cunningham's work? Do you have, you have any connection or any, any comments you wanna make about your work or the films we saw tonight with Merce? Um, well, I guess that part of that's directed towards me. So it's kind of a, I have a direct link because I used to work for the Cunningham Company um, back in the day. Um, I was uh, on, mostly on the music side. Um, I was working with the musicians there, um, but definitely his philosophy of you know his with John Cage as a partnership um, and how he approached sort of movement. I mean, at least for me and influencing my own work in terms of how we uh, allowed the movement to be its own um, grounding. Like it wasn't necessarily following music or following anything. It, it was its own anchor um, to itself um, uh, was, was definitely an inspiration or to allow that to happen. And so I know for myself making work, um, you know, being free to let the, the, the movement drive it and sometimes and the music can drive it sometimes or in the case of dance films, maybe it's the location or it's other thing or text or things like that. Just freeing, um, freeing the elements in a way um, so they have sort of equal, equal weight. And Susan, anything about Merce Cunningham that you'd like to add in terms of any influence on your work or your thinking? Well, um, it, it's, it's coincidentally, <laughs> um, Merce Cunningham's technique was what I studied in grad school. Um, <laughs> and Jan Van Dyke that um, set several solos on me was always choreographing in that particular way. So my first steps as a choreographer were taking things apart and putting them together in different orders and finding out how many how many different kinds of movement I could make from one single phrase and just starting off with the way I was taught that Morris Cunningham decided to choreograph and then going quite a bit away from it, I think over the last 30 years, but that was my home base and I was very influenced by it. I'm very, still influenced by it. I saw the last performance that um, Mars Cunningham was attending at the Kennedy Center. And when he walked out on stage, I stood up and screamed with the rest of us. 
Um, even though I, I do feel sometimes watching his work that I get fascinated in the phrasing and how it's adapting and moving. And then about 45 minutes later, I think maybe another phrase would be nice, but, <laughs> but I owe a lot to um, Mars Cunningham. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, speaking of choreographers, and, and, and maybe it was it's just me, but Susan and I show uh, a, an Elizabeth Streb work or an Elizabeth Streb influenced work, Little Ease Outside the Box. And the first piece outside, the, the dancer in the television seemed an homage to that work. I don't know if, if, if you know if that was intentional or anything about that first piece in terms of its possible connection to Elizabeth Streb's work. I can't say this with 100% certainty, but I would say probably not. Um, it's an Israeli uh, filmmaker. It was um, Enbal Pinto. It was the choreographer. And Edgar Keret wrote the story. The story was written um, for Decameron. It was a Decameron essay as part of for the New York Times. Um, during COVID. So the piece was really made during COVID. Um, but I, what I know of the work, I would say that it's more coincidental than, than anything, but I can't say that with a hundred percent certainty, but that's my, that's my gut feeling. <laughs> yeah. The strap piece is so iconic. It's hard not to uh, immediately make the connection for sure. Yeah. Right. So I just see the, um, Right, so the the woman in the piece was in Israel, and the the man in the box was actually in Tokyo, and then they managed to, not through movie magic, managed to bring it all together. Yeah, yeah it was it was quite quite wonderful the way that was those two locations were brought together. Yes. So um, maybe one more question, if you don't mind. Um, could you talk a little bit uh, about how you see uh, in your own work, um, what is the, how do you collaborate? How do you pull together the two disciplines of cinematography and choreography uh, to create a cohesive whole? How, how would you explain that to someone or, or how would you uh, describe your process in terms of that collaboration? Who wants to? Okay, I'll take I'll I'll take it. Um, so I actually so I do also make dance film, um, and I work with a cinematographer, and we there's a lot of dialogue and there's a lot of talk, um, storyboarding of the the work. The two films I've made or three films because Andy and I made a film together. Um, it's well two different ways. I've had an existing material that I've then found the right environment for. For me, the environment really plays a huge part in the telling of the story for the film. Um, but it's a lot of trust and a lot of talk between um, the cinematographer and me and like really setting up shots that think they're going to move the story or the, the movement forward. Um, I really see it as a dance between the camera and the movement and how those, and the relationship between those two. Um, yeah, I, I think that I'll, I'll leave. It, I, don't, I don't even know if I answered your question directly, but um, it's- uh, it, Can I follow up with that to maybe redirect a little bit? How do you, do you find it challenging talking with your cinematographer or how do you create that relationship? Well, it's interesting because the the rich who I've been working with now for almost ten years, we've had to really develop. We've really developed a relationship and understanding of each other. Um, and I feel like camera work is not my first language, so I really put a lot of trust in that. But we do talk a lot about. Um, what's important for the movement and what I really want captured. When he um, first captured my live work, uh, just a dance piece, he was like, oh, so I can move the camera and just capture this one person that's dancing. And I was like, oh, no, 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 because the person that's just sitting in a chair, they're actually, that's actually part of it. And like, so it's really kind of both of us learning each other's um, tool 
to understand how to work together. Uh, but if you put me behind the camera, it's probably not a good idea. Um, <laughs> I'm really the the designing of the movement, but it, I think it does take a lot of trust in the person that you're working with and um, a lot of trying to understand what each other wants to gain out of the experience. Yeah, I think that also points to, oh, sorry, go Susan. I was just points to the fact that, I mean, I think a, a unique um, aspect of dance film or screen dance is the choreographing of the eye, the choreographing of the camera move. And I know that in cinematography, there are choreographed moves and zooms and things, but the reason why it moves is often different than what a choreographer would choose. Um, you know, where it's often story driven and or find the beautiful picture in cinematography. I think there are other aspects that choreographers look for in terms of the framing of bodies and bodies in space and in the context of landscape. Um, and I think that is something that is, I think is particularly interesting and can be challenging um, uh, with any collaboration, right? In terms of language and communication. Um, but I think that's one thing that's um, particularly interesting about that. Agreed. Susan, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I just wanted to point out a, a particular kind of catch-22 that, that we seem to find ourselves in, which is we, we, we're great at talking about the ideas. And since we're married, you know, we do know each other. We do trust each other. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm often choreographing something and going, I, I am doing it. That I mean it to be seen from here. I, I need it to be. I mean it to be seen from here. Tell me where the camera will be. <laughs> or so, and I will choreograph it for where the camera is or how close the camera is or what. And he says, show me the movement and I will tell you where the camera will be. So we're in this odd thing where we're trying to communicate together a lot. And we can't quite find out how to do it always. And that's part of the reason it's so much fun. Yeah, I like those happy accidents that happen when you're like, I didn't know that that movement was going to look that way on the on the film when I did it. Um, and it's it's really nice to see that um, that excitement happen. Yeah, I think we all like happy accidents in, in the work that we do. That's true. Well, thank you all very much for uh, showing these films tonight and for speaking with us and answering the questions from our audience. I'd like to give each of you an opportunity to say a, a final word or so. So uh, we'll start, and I'm going to go in my windows. I'm going to start with Andy and then go to Allie and then to Susan. Uh, thanks. Well, I think the only thing, main thing I want, again, to, to say is just thank you again for this opportunity. Um, we're, I mean, screen dance is, is relatively new in terms of the various uh, hybrid art forms on the scene. Um, and I think especially with the uh, the more affordability of technology, like when everyone travels with the camera in their pocket these days, um, that it's just an exciting sort of time to be making work. And, and I would definitely encourage, um, you know, choreographers and dancers and even and filmmakers to dip their toe in the water. Because I think, you know, at this point, it's, it's, it's great to see what people are coming up with. So, and have, so having this opportunity to share what some people um, have come up with in hopes of inspiring other makers is, is a great opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. Allie? Yeah. Again, thank you for having us. I'm, I'm just going to do more of a, we are Motion State Arts. We are based in Providence, Rhode Island. So if you find yourself there, please come and say hi to us. Our film submissions, like I said, will open in March sometime at the end of March. So find us on Film Freeway. If you have a film that you'd like to submit, we'd love to see it. And um, if you like what we do, you know, you can follow us on Instagram at, at Motion State Arts. I'll, I'll, I'll do the, the other side. <laughs> well, thank you again, Greg. And thank you, Susan, for, you know, making, bringing us all together. It was really, really so great of you to, to suggest this. So thanks so much. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful. And Susan? Well, I just want to tell you what a wonderful program it was. I mean, I was so excited by the pieces, and now I'm going to be bothering you again about whether or not I could get in touch with some of the people and ask them for their work because it was just so wonderful. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of humbled that that we were part of it too, and that you were okay with that. And um, yeah, I'm very grateful, very excited about the work. Yeah.
All right. Well, again, thank you all very much. And to our audience out there, uh, please remember to join us next Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. We have an incredible film from Jordan called When Mona Lisa Smiled. Uh, it's a type of romantic comedy, uh, but set in the Arab world. So hopefully you can join us next week. Uh, we look forward to meeting you. And again, to our guests, thank you very much. Have a happy Valentine's Day, and we hope to see you again soon.